Okay, guys, so much awaited. We are going to play with the Anna Griffin Finishing School, the flower cart craft box that was the today special on HSN the other day. I did an unboxing, um, so just showed you kind of all the stuff that comes in here. There is also um, a separate listing for just the embellishments, which we talked about in the other video. So I'll link all those things in the description box. Those will be affiliate links, which means I'll make a small commission if you're purchased items to those links. The reason I say that is because the embellishments are super cute, so I already ordered another set. Maybe I should order another one, but anyway, <laughs> so we have what's in here. Have another set. Um, I do want to say welcome to any new viewers. I think my rosette video on making the heart rosettes, which I used in my swap and things, but I do have a couple sitting here, um, has welcomed many new viewers. But with also with that, there are also many um, comments that I don't normally get. So just so you know, I am super, you know, craft friendly. I try to just work with things in the easiest way. Um, I know sometimes people leave me comments about how Anna Griffin sent me something. I'm like, I don't work with Anna Griffin in that way, and I actually don't work for any company. I just do my reviews, and whenever a company has asked if I, you know, want to review their products, I'm like, hey, this is how my videos are, and they're like, yep, great, sounds good. You know, they don't tell me how to work them or what to do, which is really great, and um, I share my honest opinion, and. Um, you know, I've been getting comments of people that say they don't like when I say this, or they don't like when I say that. It's like, okay, well, that's just my opinion, you guys. You can check out somebody else that maybe has an opinion closer to yours. I don't know. The reason I'm saying that is because I do not care for the way this little cart goes on top of, like, the card blank. I think that's weird. So I think what we're going to do is make it a shaped card, but you do what you whatever you like, right? In crafting, everybody does whatever they like. I'm never going to sit here and say, this is how you should do it. And if you watch any of my tutorials, I've never said, do this, do that. Like, I don't, you know, this is what I'm doing, and do it however you like. Like, I'm, I'm not into all that. So, anyhow. Um, so, I, like I said, we already unboxed this. So, what I'm going to do is just open this guy up. And there are a set of instructions. And, um, you know, you have your finishing school code on the front if you want to watch some videos. Hopefully, that Anna already has put together for you guys. Um, it goes here. And then somebody already left me a comment. Because when I went through the unboxing, I'm like, oh, these papers are a little bigger than, like, 5x7. Because when I measure them, they look like they're 6x8. Um, like these guys, usually they're like more of a 5 by 7 piece of paper, or at least that's what I think, I don't know. Um, and then these guys, and you can tell, just having it in your hand, it feels a little bigger. And then someone left a comment saying, yeah, you're supposed to put on a 6 by 8 card base, but I don't think that's true, because that'd be really weird. And then when I look on here, it says, cut a 5 by 7 card base, so you're definitely supposed to cut this paper down. If you want to put it on there, of course, go for it. It's your card, right? It's your, uh, thing. It's not going to fit in these envelopes, though. Um, so... Just keep that in mind, because obviously these envelopes are for a 5x7 card base. Um, but I'm going to make it a shape card, because we have the ability to do that with that outer die. So you need a 5x7 card base, and what's interesting about that is that these aren't cards cards. I guess what she should say is like a 5x7 piece of cardstock or something like that, because these are not cards. They're just pieces of paper that are gorgeous. I will also link the Annalise uh, card making kit because that's where this comes from. And I was in love with it when I picked it up the other day. So it's definitely Annalise paper here. And I'll just kind of fan these out really quickly because I'm sure I'm going to miss some of them because I can see there's something pink here and like this blue one. Okay, really pretty. I'll try to turn this over all at once. And on the back side, a little more muted, but still patterns, right? The front is just absolutely gorgeous. This one has like a pink pattern on the back. You just don't see it. Or not that one. One of them is hard to see. Anyway, it has a little pink on it. Um, okay, so we have those guys. I'm going to make a shape card with this. And then um, everything else will basically be the same. It's just using a shape base instead of the 5x7 piece of paper. You need an easel back, which of course we have here on the dies. And then um, I'm going to use this outer piece to make it a shaped card. Uh, you need the shadow layer, which is that outer die. And then the top die cut layer, which again is this guy. And depending on the pressure of your machine, maybe you run it through and maybe you get some good embossing or maybe you have to run it back through with a rubber embossing mat. If you're using the M press and you're the kind of person that likes to cut into your magnetic mat, then you should get the embossing all at once. Um, I never really like doing that. I think I did it once just to show you guys that Anna does all the time, but I don't have, you know, magnetic mats to throw away after however <laughs> many cuts, because it does cut into it, and it'll start kind of coming apart at the top, so I, I just don't do it. Um, but, you know, again, do what you like. Uh, everyone does what they like. Uh, and then embellishments, she's saying cut the wheel, so like an extra wheel here to make that kind of pop. Um, we have your little, um, 
bouquet here or like a little basket, I guess, of flowers. I mean, if you want to use that, you don't have to, right? She has it there, but then she has it all decked out with a bunch of other flower stickers. And then you definitely need the stopper. This part right here is the stopper, or you use the sentiment for stopper, right? But that's this guy right here is what you would use to keep your easel up. But again, you can just use any one of these sentiments will hold that part up. It'll kind of hook into here. So whatever you like to do. Um, so what I'm going to do is go through this and see which papers I would like. We're definitely making the cart out of gold paper, of course. Um, and when I say we, I mean me, it's the royal we or whatever. I don't even know. If, does royal we mean like fake we? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean me. Um, so what I'm going to do is cut this guy. So let me just go through the papers and see what I want for the base and things like that. Um, and then we'll go from there. I have a feeling this easel back is going to have to be cut from another piece of paper. Like you're not going to be able to use this one piece and then still use it for the easel back part of it. You're going to maybe even cut a scrap piece of paper to be honest. Or maybe use one of the colors like this isn't my favorite. So maybe I'll use that, you know, for that part. So. Uh, let me go through that and then we'll get to cutting. Sorry, like standing up because uh, we're gonna need quite a few of this paper or a few pieces of this paper, quite a bit of it. Um, if you're gonna do like what I'm doing, I'm still gonna use the easel back, even though when I usually make a shape card, what I would normally do is get a bigger piece of paper and like fold it in half and then kind of put the edge of that, you know, towards the edge there. Um, and then score them, and I have tons of videos doing that, but this time I'm going to use this easel back so you can see how that's used, because you do the same thing for the card base if you're going to make your 5x7 card base. And I suppose you could make this a whole card, 5x7 card, but the person would have to open it like this for the, like, your sentiment and whatever you're saying in there, uh, which would be great. Again, lots of ways to play with this. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, let me put these things to the side. I'm already standing up, you guys. We're getting to business here. Um... All right, so let's talk about this. I picked out some papers, and I don't know, I was gonna put this green paper in the background, you know, behind the cart, um, but I think I'm just gonna put it on the base. So in the cart, I'm putting this guy. It's busy, but I think that'll be fine. So we're gonna need this guy. <laughs> And since I'm making a shaped card, this will be interesting because, like I said, I usually hinge my piece of paper and I put this like off the edge and we run it through and that's how we get our shape. But this time I'm just going to cut it. And to be honest, we do need this top part to be pretty flat. So maybe I'll just run it through like this, just missing that top edge anyway, because to hinge this on here, we're going to have to cut that off anyway or else it'll look weird. Or you can start your hinge somewhere else, which might also look odd. So I'm just going to do that, leave a piece hanging off the edge, and that's where I'm going to cut this. So again, this is my base paper, and let me get this guy. Most of the time when I do reviews, I'll do what is written in the, you know, um, instruction when it's something I don't really know how to use yet, but when it's something that I'm like, okay, I just don't really care for that, I'm going to do it a different way, I'm just going to do it a different way, you know, again, it's my video, it's your video, it's your project, <laughs> whatever you want to do. Um, and then this guy, I'm also going to run this through completely though, because we need a whole one of this. So this one I'm letting it be off the edge, this one I'm going to cut it, you know, obviously this green paper won't be there, I'll cut the whole thing. And then um, let's just get those pieces going. And then this is going to be my hinge piece, I think. And I'm trying to think like, if I want to match it up with the green. I suppose we will. So I'll match it up. So when this hinge is up like this, this is actually going to be touching that spot. And then it goes up like this. I'm going to put it so that the green is on this side, you know. So I'll go ahead and just, you can cut it either way. It doesn't matter. But we're going to get one of those guys. Again, you're not really going to have extra paper on any of these <laughs> to maximize your paper. But uh, if you want to just use like a plain paper or a scrap of paper you have, you can definitely do that. I'm just using the Anna papers today. Okay. So you have that. We will come back and discuss these pieces. So let's just get these base pieces going. And I'm just going to run them through, you know, one of my larger ma machines, either the tangerine or like... Actually, this will go through my Platinum 6. I don't know why I'm saying that I have to go through a larger machine. It does not. But... Having said that, uh, you guys have told me that the sizing is wrong on HSN. It basically says the largest die is four inches, which is not the case, uh, four inches wide. You know, Anna works in five by seven. Mostly everything she does, she gears towards that. She does have some things that are for the Empress Mini, like when they first came out and things, but generally she's got things that are at least, you know, four and a half inch wide, if not closer to five inches. So, and then of course, smaller things um, from there, but the larger dies. So this one, um, I measured it in the other video, is like, 
four and a half, I think, and then however tall. But I'll run this through and I'll be right real back. quick. This paper is cut like perfectly for like a platinum six or like a big shot, probably cuddle bug kind of thing. Um, it just mats onto that. So again, we have this guy, and that's fine. It looks weird, I know, but we need that flat top. And then this one, I'm just gonna cut out completely, okay? And then I'll get the other piece going. So this guy, just like this. And I'll be right back. So I move these things to the side real quick. Oh my goodness, are you guys starting your spring cleaning? It's so funny, I'm like, I feel like, I was like, oh, this craft room's getting ridiculous after Christmas and, you know, doing all the Valentine things and, um, you know, bringing all these fun things out for swaps and whatever, and I'm like, oh, we gotta get this done. But then I think it's that spring cleaning vibe you get, right? When the sun starts coming back up and you wanna lose, like I said, your winter weight. <laughs> and you're like, oh, we gotta get this cleaned up. Okay, so we have our easel. Again, I'm doing this a little bit different, but it would be exactly the same if you were doing the five by seven card. You would just have a five by seven card and you would stick this on there. Now, I'm gonna fold it because it has score lines. And so for me, you know, it just depends. Well, I guess I probably should fold it the other way. Again, I want the green and green showing together if that's too much pattern for you. If <laughs> you want to do something different, I don't know. I feel like that's even weirder. So we would do this. You would do the same thing with your, um, like I said, with your 5x7 paper you just put on top. Now, you can glue it to the back, you can glue it to the front. Whatever you think feels the best for you, what looks best, I, I don't really mind. I, I, I'm going to glue it on this back piece. Now, again, you can cut another piece and layer it on the back if that bothers you, right? Or even this being here. It's not that noticeable, you guys. I just feel like this would be better. So that's what I'm going to do. And let me see real quick what she's doing or what they're doing here. Uh, yeah, so they're sticking it to the underneath also the way I'm showing. So yeah, whatever it is you like to do. Okay. Um, let's go, let's go, all right, we got that guy, and I pretty much tend to use wet glues, if you're familiar with my channel at all, I just feel like it's never going to come apart unless you rip it. Uh, there are some wet glues that are made to stay, like, tacky, like a little rubbery, and those are great too, um, but, you know, they will shift on you later. So we have that, and this piece is going to glue here to our base piece. Now again, I'm making a shaped easel, so it would it's basically going to look the same the top and the bottom, but that little piece is missing off the top right. So we can do that. Uh, I can put some glue on here now. Or you can decorate this completely, right, and then stick it on whatever you want to do. I'm just going to put that there. I'm lining up the little legs at the moment. And just... And I'll hold this for a second, it's about here. And making sure I'm not gluing it closed. <laughs> yeah, we're good. And then that's it. So now it's a shaped easel. And it's roughly, let's see, one, two, three, four. Yeah, like four and a half. Again, the die itself is about four and a half, a little bit bigger than that wide. And that's the problem for a lot. And look at this piece. So again, <laughs> when you're looking at the whole thing, it is closer to five inches probably for this uh, outer die. And then, uh, let's see, two, four, six, six, it's like six and three quarter inches tall. So it's basically a five by seven, almost on its own. And then we're gonna stand it up like this, okay? And all right, so that's our base. Now I'm going to take this pretty guy over here and we'll run it through. So I'm gonna run this through gold paper obviously and then I'm guess another little piece which I'm sure I have some just sitting here from my stash like I'm always using the agrifin gold paper to run this guy through I don't think I need this little basket and then we'll see about our stopper later we might just use a sticker just depending on how long this video is going oh you know what this might work on one piece let's see oh yeah perfect so we do have a little scrap area that we can use for that okay and a lot of times with my gold papers, I will trim them down to the size of this because depending on how beat up your plates are, if there are any like lines on it, they can impress themselves on this gold. Um, so some people like to put like a piece of printer paper over it, run them through so that that doesn't get damaged. But for me, I'm just going to cut this away right now. And we'll see if I still have enough for that scrap wheel because I am getting pretty close here. 
Okay, if you're gonna run it back through with a rubber embossing mat, if you think that's what you need for your machine, what we're going to do is tape it down really well. Like this piece will cut away. All these pieces are gonna cut away. So I try to stick this down in a way that the paper might not move when I go to do the rubber embossing, but this one has very small areas. I don't know if it'll help out at all. But let me run this through just normally to cut it on my Platinum 6 and see what it looks like and see if we need to run it back through for embossing, okay? I'll see be right back. Got. That was an extremely tight fit, probably because it's so um, detailed. And okay. Oh wow, I think we're good. I didn't even have to, well, we'll see. I mean, that honestly is amazing. I am not gonna run it back through with a rubber embossing mat. If you do, you know, you run the chance of like, it shifting a little bit, but that's the lady machine that you're gonna run back through with the rubber embossing mat. That's what I'm saying. You try to put as much tape that'll hold the die to your surface, but I mean, that was just was running it through with nothing. <laughs> that's pretty good. All right, well, let me cut out the little wheels so we have that, and then we'll, get to playing. You know me, I love using my scraps and I was like, I wonder if the wheel fits in this spot. <gasps> it does, that piece in the middle and it's kind of a weird piece anyway, so I'm going to put a little piece of tape and run it through. And I'll be back. Pieces back. How cute. I mean, a lot of times I know she does a lot of dimension and stuff like that whenever Anna presents different things and that means you're putting like little dimensionals all over the place. This one's pretty good as far as, you know, obviously the wheels are a little more <laughs> delicate. I would put like a dimensional back there, back there, down here, all across here and all across here and I probably wouldn't even bother with this area. But if you have, oh, I always forget to link it, I will link it if I recall, the Anna Griffin dimensional set uh, which is really great. There's not an injector button on this one. So what we're gonna do is throw it a bunch of times, see if it loosens up. There we go. Um, usually, uh, because I guess this has the embossing, they have like a little hole so you can pop that out, you know, easier. But this one did not have an ejector button. So that's just for an extra dimension there, of course. And let's see, I mean, you guys, there's just lots of fun ways we can play with this. Somebody had said something about the awning, because obviously there's not a die for that. Um, aren't there other pieces? We'll see. So let me bring out all these fun things that we will get to play with now. And yeah, the awnings are here, okay. Yeah, I'm not sure what the, Somebody left a comment something about awning being something or other, I don't recall, but um, I mean they're here, they're already die cut, they have score lines, so I don't know. It would be nice to have a die for it, of course, right? But uh, but we don't, so <laughs> here we are. I'm sure you can make something very similar like this and maybe use like a punch, uh, edge punch to make something cute, I don't know. Uh, let's see, we did use the green, so let's bring the green if we're going to use the awning. This is one awning. Ooh, it is one. It's very thick. That seems odd. Okay, I was gonna say there must be more in here because there's, there's only one green one. There's all those striped ones. Look how cute they Oh my gosh. Just pulling it out of here, the flowers stuck on here. <laughs> that looks really cute. I mean, we are covering quite a bit, but I like those flowers. Let's use those somewhere in here. We have the black and pink, or black and white, pink and gold. Green, little gold one. Oh, a butterfly. Let's keep her out. So I'm just gonna go, I mean, honestly, guys, there are a ton of things in here. Um, I love, love, love this little cutie stuff here. And there is this odd piece here that let's talk about this guy. It's, um, we have flourishes and other beautiful things in here, but we have this piece. Like we have this that can be like a ledge or whatever. Uh, we have these other ones that are a little funkier. So we can think about those, I don't know. If I'll be using them, but I'll bring out a couple of them. We'll see what we think of that. Um, there are pieces that we can punch out that are like vining pieces. And then of course, just a ton of flowers over here. We have sentiments. You have your signature card, which you can still put on this shape too, if you wanted, you know. Um, okay, well let me kind of dig around. I mean, there's just a lot in here that we can play with and think about, you know, what we want. <laughs> Where I'm just, I'm in love with those baskets. The basket is super cute. I don't know if I want both of them. Maybe some more swags. Um, I, I was going to say, there are some different, look at this, <gasps> look at that one. I mean, it is just <laughs> ready to go with the whole border. I mean, and you know me, for me, less is more. I mean, this right here is great for me because that just finishes it off without making your own kind of little ledge or box over here. I mean, there's just a lot of fun ways to play with this. I'm super excited for these pieces. Look at this, a, a trio, you have four of them, you have, you know, just the, the whole box, you have all these just separate items. I mean, they're just so cute. Oh my gosh. So 
I will be back. <laughs> I'm just gonna kind of dig so around. This is just, I mean, okay. <laughs> so we have again these little shelving kind of pieces you can use. I mean, I love that guy, and this guy can kind of be in here, basically there, or yeah, because this is just depending on how you're using it, right? So this looks like it's open already if you just want to put some things there. What's a weird to me is I guess I'm going to have to stick this down with the dimensions and then build from there because some of them I will use dimensionals so I can't really stick them down because there's a whole opening here so we're going to have to deal with that first. So uh, in these kits the little guys, these little skinny guys are like half, or they're pretty skinny should I say. Um, as far as the dimension, the medium and larger bits in here are thicker so you can't really exchange one for the other because these guys are full, like smaller. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it's hard to use them in small spots and then the other ones because they're not going to touch in the same area. So I'm going to use the middle size one or medium size ones and the large ones because these guys are the same height. And of course if you're going to stick things behind just kind of place these more strategically so you don't end up not being able to stick them behind because you know you put a glue tab in the way or whatever. Uh, I'm not going to do any of that really. So then I'll start kind of switching out to these medium sized ones. And I think that's a good spot for, you can probably even use one of these bigger guys in here, but right there and right here. And I'm not gonna put anything in here. If you want to, you can definitely, you know, cut these guys down. I'm gonna take a minute to take the carriers off to not bore you out of your mind as I pick these guys off. And oh I'll gosh, be right I'm back. I'm so excited to put this together, you guys. I just feel like this is, super cute. So I did get the auto ship, which obviously is not available now, but um, I think I'm going to let them all come in, guys. <laughs> it's like the wishing well and all these different things. So let's get this guy down. This is a little kind of, you know, extra. It has the score line here. This paper is super thick. I have a feeling this is sticker paper, but it doesn't really make sense. Yep, it is. Sorry, you guys. I was just looking. Um, it is sticker paper, and I was kind of thinking, like, why would they do that? So what it is is because she wants you to fold this up so it sticks there but don't unstick this because then what I don't know I'm just gonna fold this down sorry I was just like this is sticker paper and then I can see that it came away but this is why so I'm gonna leave that piece just there if you want to take the time to cut it down I mean go for it but basically this is up like this and then you're gonna stick this in here you know or wherever um, is best for you I would definitely kind of want to put some glue this is weird okay Let's see what that looks like. Maybe that little piece of just being folded down will help it kind of pop up. No, not really. That's a kind of... Mm, uh, okay, I'm going to take it off. See how... That's what I'm telling you. I feel like I need more glue. That's going to come off really easily. Also, this sticks out, which is kind of bad. And then the other thing you can do, and I know people leave me a comment if I don't say this, you can take the whole sticker off and maybe hit this with a, some baby powder, some cornstarch with one of these guys just to get the stickiness gone. I'm just going to leave that and I'm still going to use glue and this is going to be like a nightmare because <laughs> the glue is going to make it so it doesn't stay quickly, but that's okay. I'm going to hold it here. And I only put a little bit of glue, I don't know if you noticed, so hopefully the stickiness of the sticker will help while the glue, you know, sets up. Okay, so there's that. Now, I'm going to use this piece, and it looks like, again, like it steps up. And I, to me, I'm more comfortable putting it here, but I suppose it's wherever you, maybe up here, huh? Just to give it a little distance, okay. So that basically means we need to put some glue. Is this a sticker? Mm, and you guys always tell me if it's white on the back, it's a sticker. If it's, you know, yeah, it is a sticker, but at the same time, I don't want the stickiness up here. So I'm just going to leave it like that. And I don't know if you see where I'm putting it. It basically fits ah, right inside this line to this line, right? This um, pole, I guess, or post, whatever. Oh, by the way, I always forget words, so <laughs> don't mind me here, guys. If you're new, that's just how I am. Okay. This is gorgeous. We're going to have to use this. <laughs> and that is a sticker. And I will go ahead and stick it down right now. Well, you know, hmm. I'm not going to use the sticker. I'm going to use some dimensionals. And I will use the sticker dimensional. Uh, let's see. One more. Just like there. I don't know. Okay. So that's already adding another <laughs> height to it. This is so cute. I have them like this. They kind of look like they should go like this even. Look. 
Wouldn't that be cute? Like if it was on, you know, whatever. If you had other pots or if you cut out something else. But okay, we're gonna put it like this right now over here. So cute. Okay, so there's that. And then I'm gonna use this little trio and stand them up back here. Now I think what I'm gonna do is put glue on these sticks and have them here to there. And then maybe some down here. Again, these are stickers. Yes, they are definitely stickers. I'm just kind of eyeballing what I'm doing. And then I'm going to put a big dimensional like back there. Because let's see where these are. Yep, yeah, that'll help us. Now that's the same thickness as I used earlier, right, on this bottom piece. And I'm kind of putting them out here so that um, we can see that step, you know. I think that's part of the charm, but if you want to cover it all up completely like they did in the examples, you know, everyone has their style and mine is basically less. Less? <laughs> I love less. Already I'm doing more than I normally would do. Um, anyway, that guy. And then I had both of these, but for me it's like I need to, to be like this one. So you can still see more of that. But again, that's just how I am. So, let's see. We need to get this at least the height of this. Oof. I don't know if we're going to be able to do this. Let's cut this one. Where are we at? Right here. Maybe like there would be good. That's just the height of that plus more. Okay. Let's do two of this height. And then over here. Ah! We can just glue them down. I think. Um, it's kind of an interesting space. Put some glue down here. Because this one has that second piece of flower, you know, so it's kind of holding it up there and then this guy. So I definitely will do it the way I did, which was two layered up and then glued to this flower in the background. And to me, that is wonderful. I'm happy. I love it. Of course, for the other people, they might want to continue adding more and more, and you can definitely do that, of course. It's whatever you love. Um, like I said, I put this little guy down here like this, but this, you know, set is so pretty. I love that cascading over the big uh, area there. Okay. So we have a little butterfly, and of course, I like to bend their wings and just stick them down however. Oh my goodness. I love her. I'm going to put her up here, I think. Something like that. <laughs> you guys. I mean, that is so pretty and just feminine and just lovely and just the kind of thing I like. Now, um, we still have another wheel. Now we can dimensional it. You know, put dimensionals on this. Dimensional it. That's exactly the kind of thing I like to say. You can even stick these guys down here. Like, oh, there's another pot down here, right? Whatever it is that you like to do will definitely be wonderful and amazing. Um, I'm going to put... Oh, I really hate to do this, but I'm going to put these little skinny guys down here every once in a while, and I'll be back. Ooh, yay! All right, I'll be back. So again, just strategic. I didn't put go to too crazy, just here and there. And these wheels are kind of oval, which is interesting. So I'm going to put that guy right there, and it gives it just some dimension, something cute. I mean, you guys, and again, I don't do too, too much, and just, it looks amazing. I love it so much. And then, you have that whole, you know, signature card, you have a stopper you can put, if you would like, down in there. I mean, you can use the flowers themselves for stoppers. I think, oh my gosh, if every day is for flowers. Oh, I like that. It's very much, and look, it has a green border. I didn't even think of that. I was going to do the um, stop and smell the roses. That works too for me. But again, I'm being very delicate th with this right now, you guys, because um, of that awning <laughs> that I'm still kind of wary of. But you see how that holds it back too? You don't have to do a whole other die cut thing if you don't want. And even this, you can pop this up so it has even more dimension. But I'm just going to, I'm just going to stick it down. Sometimes if it's hard for you to get back in there, you can use like a pointy tool to kind of get under there. Don't gouge it too much though, because it'll definitely go through the paper, so you want to be careful with that. And let's say, how high do we want this? And then also, you know, where do you want it centered? Whenever you have a shaped card, it's a little different. Let's put that back like that, I think. That'll be good. The green does blend in too much, I think, with the green underneath, but that's okay. 
and that would be it. And then, I mean, if you have another sentiment you would like, or even just the thank you. Oh, that's so cute. Okay, hold on. <laughs> like, if you had this little guy in, tucked in here somewhere or back out here. Again, are you putting this in an envelope? <laughs> are you sending this off? Because that would limit, you know, kind of what's sticking out where or however. So, I am thoroughly in love with this. I'm super happy that I picked it up. Like I said, it's still available with the single ship option. You guys, I'm just... And you know what, this weekend was just kind of a really busy weekend and I was wanting to get to this. I did some other things that I thought were going to be quicker. Some other projects and this was not very long. Obviously I'm talking about things we're doing this kind of, we're discussing. Um, but I really love this. I think this came out really, really cute. I. I, I don't even know what more to say. Look at the little dimension. And of course, this will squish down, and then hopefully, you know, when your recipient gets it, they can kind of give it a little, a little zhuzh. I am super happy with this. I love, again, you know, we hinged on the outside. It doesn't look weird here. It kind of blends in there. Not the biggest deal. You can put your signature card on the back and have your sentiment. You know, you can layer this up a few times. There's such, so much you can do. Um, yeah, what more can I say? I'm super happy with this. I think every little bit is super cute. All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching. I have images coming up. I have the links in the description box, and I'll see you guys at the next one. Bye now.